Yo, how's it going guys? Welcome back for another Planet Zoo video. Zookeeper Chris here, and today we've got something a little bit different for you, and that is our first Planet Zoo tutorial guide. Today is gonna be on the gondola ride, and I wanna keep this video short, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so you guys can already see that the video is gonna be longer than that. Sorry, you guys know how much I hate super long YouTube videos, but there's a lot of information in this video. Gondolas are complicated and I want to cover everything that I could possibly cover and to help you guys out I'm gonna go ahead and put timestamps in the description down below So that way you can skip forward in the video to any point that is more relevant for you And let's just go ahead and jump straight into it So first thing with gondolas is if you are not in sandbox mode You will need to research this you just take your mechanic you bring them down to transport rides and it is level 2 that you get the gondola so do that first once you have that done, you'll see gondolas pop up in facilities down here, gondola. And what you do is from here, um, you can set the gondola down however you want, just like you can set any item down in Planet Zoo. You can rotate, you can push the station down and up however you see fit. You'll see that the gondola has a white arrow facing in the direction that the track will be going, that the ride will be operating in. Down here, you'll see options for your station and where the entrance and exit of your ride is gonna be. You can set this up now, or you can set it up later once you've already got it placed down. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep my entry and exit on the left side, on the same side for this purpose, but you can set up however you want. Uh, you can also set up angle snap uh, if you'd like as well for when you're rotating it around. I'm just gonna have that turned off as well. And we're gonna do a very basic gondola to start and then we'll get into some more complicated things down the road. So you place your first gondola down, it's going to go ahead and start you with the track editing. What I would suggest is editing your station. You can do it with one station just like this with an entry and exit uh, right here on the station, but I've had issues with that in the past. So personally, what I like to do is um, extend the station a little bit. So rather than going down here and having it on standard track, you go down to station and you choose your entry and exit point. Uh, like I said, mine will be on the same side and I'll click down a couple. All this does is it will extend your station a bit, gives you more room. The gondolas will park here on your station. If you do wanna have a smaller station, that's fine. Like I said, I just personally try to avoid only having one block of a station because I seem to run into issues with that. From here on your station, once you've got that set up for a few runs, now you can go ahead and get started with building your track. Now, if you want to do like the most basic setup you can possibly think of, you can actually hit auto complete here and it'll give you boom, just like a super basic circle. But we're not going to do that. Um, you can also use auto complete down the road. So say you get like halfway through your entire park, you know, and you're going all the way down and you're halfway through, you're all the way to the back of your park and you just want to route it back to the front. You can hit auto complete and it'll do that for you as well. And then from here, you can also kind of edit you know, your track a little bit, you can pull things out, you know, and whatnot and modify it a little bit. But that's if you're feeling super lazy and you just wanna get it back to the beginning as fast as possible. So anywho, from your track editing, there's a couple menus that you have here. This one is to raise and lower the uh, incline or decline of the track. You can only do it at eight degree intervals. You can't have your track going like a roller coaster, you know, running straight up in the air and then boom, straight down. It's gotta be realistic here. Here is to turn your track. If you wanna do a sharper turn, you select this here. This is the length, decrease the length. You then make sharper turns. You want wider turns, go ahead and increase the length of your track, just like that. And then from here, you just right click or you can also hit enter to bring down or to place down the track pieces. From here, again, very basic track, uh, very basic gondola setup from here. I'm just gonna go ahead and make it a loop, loop it around. And actually, I'm just gonna be super lazy, autocomplete. Good God, what is that monstrosity? Oh, it's probably because it was so high up in the air that I couldn't get down fast enough to the station, so it had to go that way around. Um, actually, I'm not gonna do autocomplete. What I'm gonna do is I wanna show you one thing really quick. So once you've completed your track and you've gotten near the station here, if you see this little uh, option here, this is like a little jigsaw piece. You just click the jigsaw piece and then you can get down into the station. I had a little issue there where it just said track limit exceeded. Just go ahead and reposition your track until you can get it to click in just like that. Boom, we have our first uh, very basic gondola set up here. So let's go into some of the menus here for a very basic setup, all right? So from here, if you click the ride, you hit, you know, just from nothing, you click the ride here, you'll see you have your station, it's unpowered. So let's go ahead and just get this powered really quick. Boom, solar power, renewable energy. 
All right, so now we'll go ahead and escape. We'll hit this. So it's powered. You'll also see with your station, you'll ha you have problems. Um, so you'll go ahead and click your station. You'll see that you need to place an entrance and exit, and then you need to connect the entrance to a path. We'll go ahead, we'll click this. It'll let us place our entrance, which is over here. So I'll place that there, click this, place exit right over here, connect the entrance to a path. It'll automatically bring up the queue line for you. And you can just bring that down to wherever. And then you do a regular path for the exit. You do that down to wherever. Obviously, this is not how you're going to do it in your zoo. Once you've got the queue line connected to a regular path, you'll see you have a staff member set up at the front here. These lights here signify what is going on with the ride, whether it is closed, if it's in testing, it'll be orange. And then if it is open, boom, fireworks, and it is green and good to go. So we have our very first basic setup here for our gondola. So these menus here, I'm gonna go through some of these pretty quickly. Um, some of these are menus that you've probably seen before, like your overview tells you your profit, your yearly guests, all that fun stuff. Your ride statistics, uh, which you can get that set up through testing, finance statistics, um, customized ride. So this is pretty big. You want to customize your ride colors. I'll let you do this on your own time, but you can customize pretty much every little piece of the track here in Planet Zoo. It's really awesome. Um, feature and you can even customize the cars on the track here with whatever colors that you want really cool There you go, so you can customize the entire track just like that and it does the entire track those colors if you want to select just one little section you can go down here to um, Sorry, we have to close the ride down first and go down here to edit track and you can choose a particular track piece like this piece right here and then down here, now I can customize the colors for just this one particular track piece. So you'll see here, I'm gonna go ahead and just customize this entire track section. And now you'll see that applied only to this section here. Now you gotta be careful because now if I go back to the ride and if I go down to the customized ride, it'll actually override that section. So customize your entire ride first to the colors that you want and then go through and do track pieces by um, piece if you want specific colors for specific sections. This can be pretty useful if, you know, this section of the track, we're going through a jungle themed area. You can have it dark green like this. If it's going through a savanna area later on, you can do like a dark beige color or a light beige color just to kind of fit the theme a little more. But like I said, make sure you do the customization of the colorings everywhere first and then piece by piece if you want to do that afterwards. Um, going down this menu here, you'll see for the ride, you have ride operations. So you can either do continuous loop or shuttle mode. This right here is continuous loop. It just goes in a circle. This over here is what shuttle mode looks like. You have two stations and then the gondola just goes back and forth. Um, most times in your, your zoos, you'll have this setup over here to the right where it's continuous mode. This is limited use. Um, it's good if you're going to and from places. Some people like to do this if it's just going uh, through a mountain and they have some like exhibits placed in a mountain. Um, so it does have its uses. It's just a little more, a little more niche. Um, so that's that's the shuttle mode there. You can only have one gondola on it at a time. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> so one gondola at a time for this over here on continuous. You can actually add more gondolas. So you click on the ride over here. And then make sure the ride is closed for this. It won't work if it's running. Go down here and you can add amount of cars. So like I said before, you can add as many as you want to where it'll go off the track. I'm actually curious how high you can go. OK, so you can go up to 20. Jeez, that's a lot. I'm not going to do that because that's overkill. Anywho, so you can choose the number of cars over here. And then also you can choose the speed. If you want to give them a thrill ride, 20 miles an hour, if you want to give them a scenic ride, maybe like 10 or lower. Uh, so usually I have mine at like 10 miles an hour, just in the middle somewhere. But so, yeah, and then up here you have closed, you have testing. If you just want to run the ride in testing mode, just to see how it looks before you let riders on it. And then once you're ready to open, boom, hit open, fireworks go off and hopefully people will ride the ride. So again, this is a very basic setup. Uh, you can actually add more than one station for continuous um, loop like this. All you have to do is you have to break out a section. So go ahead and close the ride down. Um, down here, you'll see some menu items that you're used to from Plan Z from other parts of the game, such as saving as blueprint, being able to move the entire thing. If I hit M and then move it, you'll see the 
uh, paths don't move with it, obviously. Um, so yeah, some of these you're already used to. Um, ride camera, you can ride the rides just like any other ride. You can do cinematic view. You can go ahead and go to seat view and change your train that you're on, the car that you're on, or you can change what seat you're looking on, and then also point of interest view as well. Personally, I like looking at cinematic and I really like looking at the seat view, see what my guests are seeing on the ride. So you have ride camera, move, advanced move, and then just delete the whole thing. So to add another station, go down here to edit track. Again, ride has to be closed, edit track, and then we'll go to a different section of the track, say over here. And then what we'll do is we'll delete that section. So we'll go over here, we'll go to station, and then we'll select the station. Hey, uh, and actually first, let's fix this. There we go. Station, better. So you have to you have to position the, the track first where you want the station. And then you go ahead and press station and then it'll place it wherever you chose. So I'll go ahead and build another station really quick. Continue with the track. Loop it around and I'm going to try and get it up over to this side here. Maybe he... No, I'm about to change it. I'm about to make it... I'm about to get it up a little higher quicker. There we go. All right. See, it didn't work at first. You just kind of have to make sure to get it to a realistic point there to where it'll auto snap for you. So now we have two stations set up on this. This is really good if you have a really big zoo and you want to let your guests get on and off at multiple points of the ride. So you do have to make sure that all stations are powered for this. So we'll add another solar power here. And then again, for this one, you do have to set up the entry and exit. And you'll see here now we have two stations on the station list when we collect, select the ride. So I'll select station 19 over here, place my entrance, place my exit, connect all that stuff here really quickly. Boom. So this station is now good to go. And then again, each station has their own uh, menus here. So when you go ahead and you select your ride, you select each station and you can rename the stations as well. You can go to this one. You know, this can be like if it's near your elephants, elephant station um, and then click the ride and you can select this other one over here. If it's by like big cats, I don't know, big cat station, whatever you want. So you select the ride, then you go to um, your station here. And now these menus options are very similar to some other ones that you've seen. Again, your basic overviews, you can read through that ride statistics, finances. You can increase the price of the ticket to get on the gondola based on the location. If you want to move your entrance and exit. You can do that here. Load rules. OK, so load rules are pretty important. Um, we'll go over that in a second. And then ride maintenance as well is another option here. So load rules. You have your minimum rider load. So this is basically the minimum amount of people that have to be on the ride before it will depart. Personally, I usually have this on any load to avoid issues, but say you want your gondola to fill up with the half the max amount. So say you want that to be um, halfway full, you have to select that. And then now basically it'll stay in the station until it gets half full. What you want to do is if you select this, make sure that you go down here and hit don't block station. Otherwise, if this is not selected, it'll just sit there forever with guests sitting in it, waiting to get filled up if there's no guests coming. So like I said, usually I hit any load and then I don't have to worry about this because it'll depart as soon as some people get on the ride. OK, yeah, so minimum wait time is the minimum amount of time that the gondola will stay in the station before departing. Max time is the maximum amount of time that it'll wait for somebody to come up to the ride before departing. So I, usually I have these turned off. Um, it just helps me keep the ride moving smoothly and I tend to run into less issues. But if you want to tweak those settings, you can as well. And then minimum departure interval is the last thing on here. That is the minimum amount of time before the next gondola heads out. So right now a gondola will head out every six seconds and right now it'll head out every 10 seconds. So I'll just leave that like that. And then finally here you have ride maintenance. You can set up work zones for this ride just like other things like vendors and habitats and whatnot you can change how often your mechanic comes by. I usually do it every six months or so because they tend to not actually come every six months. And that is that. So you can change all those settings again per 
uh, gondola or per station. I wish there was a way for them to sync up all the stations to have the same settings because that's actually what I prefer to do is to have them on the same load rules um, just to make things go a little bit smoother. So try and I would say try and make your load rules the same per station, but you may have to tweak it depending on, you know, distance between the stations and how big your ride is. So that right there is your basic gondola setup. Once your gondola, once your whole gondola ride is already set, you can, you know, tweak tweak it a little bit, but you're pretty limited with, you know, what you can do once the track is already set. Another thing to mention with the ride here is you can select a certain section. So we are in ride edit. You can select a section just like you can for for walls. Select a certain section, then you can hit smooth all or smooth banking. Usually what I'll do is I'll hit smooth all a couple times because you'll see you actually have to hit it a couple times for it to smooth it out as much as possible. If you just hit it once, it only does it a little bit. Very similar to how smoothing terrain works, actually. That can be pretty handy as well, smoothing all and smoothing uh, the banking. But the banking is more for, I believe, turns and going down and up. It smooths it out a little bit. So, so that is that. That's your basic setup for a continuous loop. Now, some more advanced things over here that I've got displayed is if you want to set up tunneling, uh, so down here, when you're editing your track, you have auto tunnel. Now it speaks for itself. What it does is if you want to go down below ground, it'll automatically tunnel for you. Um, and the same works above ground. If you want to go through a mountain or something, it'll do the same thing. So there's really cool things that you can do with the track in doing that. Um, just an example over here, I made a little mountain. You can see it tunneled through. Once you've auto tunneled through a mountain like this, you can go ahead and go to terrain and pull and kind of lower the amount of space that it takes up because auto tunneling does take up quite a bit of space and it takes up more space than you really need. So you can go down and like, you know, see decrease the, the space of the tunnel here. Just like that. Very cool auto tunneling. And like you can see here, it has some really cool things that you can do with it. Very unique track work that you can do with it underground and through mountains. So that is auto tunneling there. Another setting that you can see over here when I go to edit track is height markers. So you can see right now I have them turned off. And then once I turn them on, you'll see them pop up. There you go. So this is terrain relative and sea level. Pretty self-explanatory. So this is relative to the terrain. You'll see I have ground raised up. So this is only 40 feet from where this ground is raised up at. Down here, 67 feet from the top up here all the way down to the bottom of this lake. If I want to make it sea level to where it's a little more consistent, you'll see now this is 49 feet above sea level around here, and this is 71 feet above sea level. So not this is not obviously from the top of the terrain here, it's from down at sea level. You can have these turned on or off. They're good if you want to try and make your track even. Um, otherwise, if you don't care, you can just turn them off so you can get a better view of your track. Um, track supports is another option. If you're super simple like me and you don't want to mess with it too much. I just keep them turned on. It looks more natural, but you can turn them off and make your track without any track supports. Um, similar to how you can do pathing, um, race pathing, you don't have to have supports on those. Doing no track supports is good for people that are super creative and they want to build their own track supports using the construction features. There's some really unique, really cool things that you can do with that. Um, definitely check out some other videos on YouTube from other creators who have done some really unique things with that, with their own custom gondola rides. And again, there are some other menu options in here, such as the camera, free camera, attach and rotate, all those stuff. Um, usually I just have it set up to free camera, but you can click those on your own time and see how they look and what they do. And if you prefer it that way, I think that's basically it for the rides. A couple problems that you might come up with with gondolas in particular and sometimes other rides, but this is more specifically for gondolas. Um, like I said, so try and make your station have more than just one section. Like I said, try and make it two or three at least. Sometimes you do run into issues with the entrance and exit being so close together with one station. I found that personally. Another issue that sometimes you'll have is guests just simply won't go on the ride at all. A quick fix that I have found for this issue is go ahead and just close the ride down exit your game and then reopen the game and reopen the ride and sometimes that'll get it to where guests will start to kick in and start coming onto the ride but another big thing that can be an issue is your stations you'll want to come click on your stations and then the load rules you might need to tweak your load rules a bit that can also affect if guests are, are getting on or off the ride properly 
So again, check your load rules. You might need to tweak that. Um, you can try the quick fix of turning the ride off and then <laughs> turn the ride off, then turn it back on again, essentially. Uh, you can try that fix, turn it off, close the game out, reopen the game, turn the ride back on and see if that works out for you. If you have any more issues, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and we can try and figure something out, but that's usually my go-to and those ones tend to work for me. Um, also, if you have it in an area of the park that is less populated than another area, obviously guests might not naturally bump into the ride through that way, so uh, it does help if you have other things around the ride to attract guests to that area. So another thing you want to consider with your ride is if you click on the station, and then, um, I think it's this one here, yeah. And then you go to ride statistics and you look at your station scenery rating. This one is currently low. A good way to bump it up is decorate your station a bit. So this setting down here, start building on station grid is like amazing for that. So I'll go ahead and click start building on that grid. And now what I can do is I can just go to architecture, walls, and I can just build straight off of the ride here. So you can just do that and build off of the station. So click the station again, go to start building on station grid, and it just makes things a lot easier for decorating your station and customizing how it looks. So just decorate your station a bit there and you will increase uh, your station scenery rating that way. You can add decorations into the station here and obviously trees and whatnot around there and bump up the rating. For the station scenery rating, you do want to try and get that up a bit and that will bring more guests to that particular ride. So try and get that rating up through decorating the station itself. Um, another thing to mention is this back section here. Uh, I'm pretty OCD and I want it to match this here. So what you have to do is just go to paths, go to queue, and then you can select your queue and put the same pattern over there. Boom. I believe that is everything. So that's going to do it for our gondola tutorial video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If I said something incorrectly or you feel like I left something important out, be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. Just a reminder, if you would like to chat with me live, I am over at twitch.tv slash zookeeper chris every Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. EST. So feel free to drop on by. We'd love to see you. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. And again, thanks for watching. Until next time, stay wild.